A while back, I tried to find out why there were so many solder pads on a touchpad other than the ones used in the previous projects. So I hooked it up to an Arduino microcontroller board programmed with the PSU mouse example code. Attached a jumper wire to the ground header of the Arduino board, opened the serial monitor and started to touch each pad with the free jumper wire. Then I noticed something. Stay tuned till the end and let's explore what I found out. Of all the solder pads, the two of them labelled 7 and 6 showed some changes in the serial monitor. On touching the pad 6 with the wire, the first row of numbers changed from 8 to 9. In the case of pad 7, it changed to 10. Let us name the pads 6 and 7 as inputs A and B respectively. I then tried one more thing. I took another jumper wire, connected it to ground and touched both of the solder pads with these wires. Interestingly, the number on the serial monitor changed to 11. One more thing though, on tapping a finger on the touchpad, the number on the serial monitor changed to 9. Luckily, the touchpad I used had a large enough ribbon cable connector compatible with a workable ribbon cable. So this time, instead of soldering wires on the copper pads directly, I modified the ribbon cable into a sort of breakout adapter to connect the touchpad to the Arduino board and other devices. In this process, I also learned a lesson to never solder wires on or near the connector end of a ribbon cable. In my first attempt, it seemed to work properly, but after some time the connection got destroyed. I took precaution next time and soldered wires a bit farther away from the connector end and managed to do the job without destroying the cable. By the way, these wires were recovered from an old parallel printer cable. These type of cables are a great source of good quality wires and cost next to nothing. Anyways, let's get back to the touchpad. There is a character variable mstat in the code which was storing the values we saw in the first row of the serial monitor. In order to use these values more easily, I made an int variable m and used this line of code to copy the value of mstat to m. Now we can monitor the states of the inputs A and B by checking the value of the variable M. For a basic demo, I wrote a simple code to check the value of the variable M. If it becomes 9, meaning the input A is connected to ground, the LED on pin D13 will turn on. If the value becomes 10, meaning input B is connected to ground, the LED will turn off. Now we can use these two inputs as additional digital input pins for our Arduino microcontroller projects. You can get complete documentation of this project including parts list, step by step instructions and a source code through the link in the description. Remember, we saw that on connecting the inputs A and B simultaneously to ground causes the number to change to 11. Checking the digital states of these inputs for all the values from 8 to 11 we have all the possible combinations of the digital states of these inputs. This means that now we can also connect a rotary encoder to the touchpad. I went back to the computer and wrote a code to utilize those inputs to allow the touchpad to accommodate a rotary encoder. The code for the rotary encoder allows us to control the brightness of an LED connected to pin D9 of the Arduino board, which can also be done by sliding the finger along the x-axis. There seems to be a small problem associated with using a rotary encoder with a touchpad. The rotary encoder manages to work fine at slow speeds, but at high speeds the counter fails to keep up with the encoder. At the end, this hack allows us to add more functionality to our touchpad, which can prove to be quite useful for user interface projects, especially where we have very few digital I.O. pins to work with. I hope you enjoyed this project. You can check the description for more information. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss the next video. Until then, 
check out this project where a stepper motor is converted into a rotary encoder thanks for watching